we all use the e-commerce platform like Amazon and Flipkart and whatnot uh, almost every day for our day-to-day -day shopping. Have you ever wondered how the infrastructure um, design behind that e-commerce platform, at least the front-end part, looks like? Well, in this use case today, I'm going to discuss about uh, a sample use case for an e-commerce platform and uh, that would help you understand uh, how to implement it, how to build it, how to design it. And that's very important for a DevOps professional. So why don't we get started with it? Well, um, this is an architecture um, from uh, taken from the AWS's architectural, um, you know, uh, architectural center. And uh, you can relate to an e-commerce platform that you use already. And uh, let's say Amazon or let's say Flipkart in India. Um, and uh, this is basically the fundamental components that you would find in almost all the e-commerce platforms. And that's what we are talking about here. So let's get go through it uh, one at a time and let's try and understand what is the purpose of each of that component. Let's say this is a customer, the user who is accessing uh, that e-commerce platform and uh, the customers are presented with the catalog. Let's say I'm on Amazon and I see the catalog and a, a bunch of products which are relevant to my search and uh, those products to display uh, come from the recommendation engine. Now in this use case today, we are talking about just the front end, but there is also a recommendation engine and we can think of it as a black box right now. Uh, but that gives me the recommendation about based on my history, based on the you know searches that I've made, based on the products that I've uh, purchased, and also based on what I would uh, like. For example, uh, I have small kids, so I'm buying diapers. So it gives me uh, very accurate recommendations just about when my diaper uh, pack is going to be over. Uh, somehow, magically, it just gives me um, a push message saying that, oh, you may want to buy this again. Uh, so it is as accurate as that really today. Uh, and that's very interesting, uh, you know, uh, how it works. So that's part of the recommendation engine. Uh, but apart from that, you have the catalog of the products. And that catalog of the products is stored in the DynamoDB in, in here. Now, we are, I've taken this architecture from AWS. So you see all the components related to AWS. But when you build it for yourself, it can be different components on maybe different clouds or completely outside of the cloud as well. For example, DynamoDB can be replaced with something like MongoDB. Uh, it's basically essentially a NoSQL database format. And that is where all the products uh, products reside, along with the persistent sessions. So session data related to uh, my user login, etc. Uh, that goes there. The temporary session, the transient session, is stored in the Elastic Cache, which is an in-memory caching service. And that is an implementation managed service for Redis or Memcache. So again, you can replace those components with Redis, Memcache, etc. Uh, that stores the transient session data. And the reason why we put it there is also we can share it across different servers and it doesn't, um, it makes the front end servers uh, stateless. And that is a very important thing to have. A very important part of uh, any uh, search, any uh, let's say e-commerce platform is the search component, right? Because you're constantly searching for, you know, uh, products and, uh, you know, uh, you need to see the results almost instantaneously. Uh, so, uh, and uh, you would realize that uh, any platform like Amazon and uh, uh, Equivalent have probably has 100,000 products or probably hundreds of thousands of products or more. And all of those products are part of the catalog, yes. But um, a lot of that needs to be indexed. So each of that product needs to be indexed uh, so that you can search uh, faster and uh, you see the results almost instantaneously. This comes from the uh, indexing and search engine. And in this case, it is cloud search. Uh, you could also replace the cloud search with um, just an elastic search implementation or you could use another uh, tool that is Apache Solar. Uh, but you have to have the search feature as part of any e-commerce platform. There might be tens of other features uh, in the specific platform, but these are the fundamental uh, you know, uh, uh, components that you would see almost everywhere again. Uh, the front end here is being served by a service called as Elastic Beanstalk. This is AWS's uh, uh, PaaS solution, platform as a service. Again, this architecture is back from, let's say, 2015 times or so. 
So that's why you see Elastic Beanstalk at that time it's, it was quite popular. But you could replace that with today, if I have to replace this with something, it would be the Kubernetes infrastructure. So I would just set up Kubernetes, either a managed Kubernetes service like EKS, that is EC2 Kubernetes uh, service, or I would just build my own Kubernetes cluster as well if I want to manage it myself. There are choices there, but um, essentially Kubernetes will take care of, uh, you know, or replace the past solution like uh, Elastic Beanstalk in all these places and that would run the front-end application servers um, and any other microservices that I may have uh, would all be running via uh, the Kubernetes infrastructure that I would see here. I could also add today some serverless components um, such as Lambda functions, function as a service as well, um, you know, as part of my, uh, uh, you know, infrastructure design uh, process as well. Now, when it decides that, oh, it has to show these, these, these products and uh, the images for those and uh, a lot of that static data comes from the S3. Generally, it is stored in S3 and through the S3, um, you know, it is via CloudFront, which is a content delivery network. Again, there'll be hundreds of thousands of uh, people searching uh, and using this platform. In some cases, millions of users as well um, using these platforms um, at the same time. So you want to serve them very quick and you must have a content content delivery network, which, you know, has this global edge locations, uh, which are closer to you. So you uh, get to, you know, download those images and media files. So because this is not uh, one web page, it is actually made up of many hyperlinks. Uh, and all of those come together on this page. And there's also recommendations and, you know, uh, other components, which sometimes get disabled and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, CloudFront plays an important role in this use case along with S3. S3 is the object store of, of the, uh, you know, over the internet, any static data that you have. It could be media files like videos or images. It could be log files, again, log files from the CloudFront as well as from the web servers, applications, all of those are being stored in S3. And you could use those for, um, and feed those into the analytics engine. Uh, which is not shown here, but uh, they would definitely be inadvertently be an analytics engine, which is collecting the data, which is looking at the um, behavior uh, patterns, also what you're buying, what you're searching for. And all of that also goes to the recommendation service. So if you look at the recommendation service, I'm pretty sure you will find that analytics engine mo most likely there. Uh, in addition to that, you have this Route 53, which is more like a DNS service, and that's your entry point. So when you use Amazon.in, and even the hyperlinks, it gets served via, uh, translated via Route 53, but Route 53 is also capable of uh, doing, you know, uh, regional failovers or load balancing across regions um, and uh, things like that as well. It is very well integrated with the AWS um, infrastructure here. Right. So uh, that's uh, in a just what we see here. So uh, there's a Route 53 DNS service and uh, then uh, the customers would be served um, the page via multiple hyperlinks. Uh, a lot of those images come from via CDN and what to show would be, um, you know, the inputs from the recommendation service would come in and the web server will decide based on your history, based on your session, based on your login information, uh, what products would interest you. Uh, that would be presented to you via this. And then there is once you put it in the cards, uh, you initiate the checkout process and that is handled by the checkout application. And these are the components we would uh, discuss in another uh, video. But I just wanted to talk about uh, briefly how uh, an e-commerce website works, the front end of the e-commerce website work, what are the key components of that and uh, how it all comes together. And as a DevOps professional, it is important uh, for you to understand this because you may be the one who would be involved in setting up Kubernetes infrastructure, setting up and managing the indexing and uh, search services like cloud search, setting up and scaling the DynamoDBs or equivalent like Mongo database and cluster of that, uh, deploying the Elastic Ache service, automating um, deployment to all of those. So they'll be part of the continuous integration and delivery process. And that is what you do as the DevOps professionals. And that was this use case was uh, all about. Well, I hope you found that use case to be useful. Uh, if you liked it, do give me a thumbs up. Also mention in the comments what you liked about it or what you would like to see uh, more about it. Or if you have any specific questions about uh, this use case, uh, let me know as well. And also join my, uh, you know, private community on Facebook where you can, you know, get updates about DevOps and um, everything around it, as well as my uh, membership programs and the new courses as well. Uh, that's it for this week. Uh, thank you very much. And I'm going to see you in the next one.
，拜拜。